while I am generally of the mind that not having any context shouldn't impact a person's enjoyment of a film, sometimes when we learn a specific fact about a film or we learn some background information, it can really change our opinion about it. And I have to say, this happened for me with a film called Christmas Staycation. This is also known as A Dog for Christmas. There's a really interesting review on IMDb from the film's writer who actually provide some really interesting information about this. So I will share some information from that review in a moment, and the link to the IMDb page will, as always, be in the description. A Dog for Christmas, or Christmas Staycation, was released in 2015. It's directed by Chris Nicken and John Paul Reisig, and written by John Paul Reisig and Scott Voschel. And this is about a family at Christmas time, and that's it. And it's basically just about the different things that they get up to. There's a kid who eats loads of cookies and there's other things happening in the snow outside. It's it's hard to describe because not much happens. There's a lot going on because we have this kind of chaotic, busy family environment where there are a lot of characters. And I guess it's a, a pretty accurate representation of what it's like to have a whole family coming together at Christmas. But despite there being a lot going on, there's also not really anything happening either. And for me, that's not a good thing. I like narratives to be interesting or for us to have at least a character who I thoroughly enjoyed. Santa Claus is in this, which I wasn't expecting. Santa is played by Richard Karn. And I guess the role of Santa Claus works well. The rest of the characters are absolutely fine. We have Dean Cain, Dustin Diamond, Sophie Bolin. None of the acting was a problem at all, and none of the characters were bad. I don't think there was a single badly written character. I just didn't really care for any of the characters either. And then you throw in the fact that there's not really a narrative. I didn't really enjoy it. It could be a good film to put on if you want something with a kind of Christmassy atmosphere, but that doesn't require much concentration. And sometimes that, that's a good thing if you're looking for that kind of film. But if you want something where you can sit down and engage with a narrative or follow the journey of a character or a couple of characters, that's not going to be that kind of film. Now, a lot of the reviews were comparing it to National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, but a very watered down version. And actually, the, the writer and producer and... Um, this is the review that I was talking about. The review is from Joel Paul Reisig, and in their review, they they left a review. They did give it 10 out of 10 stars, which is a little cheeky, but they left a review to reply to some of the comments, which I actually thought was a, a really awesome thing to do. I'm also of the mind that you shouldn't read reviews of your own work because it's a slippery slope. But nevertheless, they've provided this comment, and I found this to be really fascinating, and it kind of made the film almost more memorable, because I'm going to remember that the writer actually took the time to pro to provide more context and to respond. So to, to summarise things that they've said, but as I've said, I will link the IMDb page in the description, they did say that actually it is a kind of Christmas vacation. They said, and I quote, it is a lower budget version of Christmas Vacation made for adults who have seen Christmas Vacation 20 times and would like to try something new. It is very rare that we are told exactly who the film is for, with any film. And I think that that's pretty awesome. So if that's you, if the writer has just described you, then you are the target audience. I've seen Christmas Vacation once and I didn't like it. So it doesn't surprise me that I didn't love this film. But Christmas Vacation has a huge audience. So obviously there is an appetite for that kind of film. And therefore there is a potential audience for this. What's also interesting is the writer, um, Reisig, also mentioned that the title A Dog for Christmas was forced on him by the original distributor. And they even say, it's a terrible title. There's no dog in my movie, which I, I had to laugh at. I mean, it, it, it's awful. And it, it happens, you know, people like either the producers or distributors or some other power behind the film can often override the writer or director's decision with the title. And having that context made me less annoyed about the title because I was thinking, why is this also called A Dog for Christmas? But having the writer also saying, what on earth, 
it just it made me smile and it, it kind of put me in a much better mood. I'm not saying every writer of every film that's got a lot of bad reviews should go and comment on IMDb, but I really appreciated it. And I like that they took the time to provide this information and uh, it kind of made me like the film a little bit more. As I said at the beginning, I don't necessarily think you should have to have background information to enjoy the film. And I'm now not saying I enjoyed the film because I didn't. But it's a, a much more enjoyable experience once you actually have some context and you can actually find that the things you're irritated about, such as the title, the writer is also irritated about. And that's pretty awesome. So it's not a good film, but I don't like National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. So... I can't really say that I'm the target audience, despite my great Christmas films. But if you like National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, then it might be for you. I'd love to know what you think of it, and whether or not, if, if you are a fan of Christmas Vacation, do you think it's a worthy comparison? I'd be very keen to know your thoughts. For me, Christmas Vacation, or A Dog for Christmas, is not a good film. But apparently there is an audience for it, and I'd be keen to know if that is you.